Hello, welcome to my second video. In today's session, we are going to look into the web traces for single sign on. We are going to see the fiddler traces and the web traces that the browser traces that we um, take using developer tool and possibly the browser extensions. And also, I'll show you how to do that in um, Firefox. So, my name is Ash. Let's begin. The first website that you see on my screen, SP Test, is my sample SP, and the second one, sample test ID, is my IDP. I've already set the SSO between them, and uh, I have the URL to test. So let me copy this, paste this. Now, before I do that, let me make sure that my Fiddler is running. So open Fiddler, it's already running. Make sure that you go to File and see that it is actually capturing the traffic uh, you know you should see that check box sorry the check mark here and you need to also make a small change um, go to tools at the top options go to https tab and make sure that you have this uh, decrypt https traffic checkbox checked it might ask you to install the root certificate to do that since i've already done all that so let me close that out let me remove these additional records and let me start. Hit enter. Let me go to Fiddler to see if it is capturing. It is. Put the username and the password. Click on login. And there we have it. Now this is our Fiddler trace for the um, SSO session, the SSO try that we just made. So let me first save this. Click on File, Save All Sessions. Let me save that on my desktop. Click on Save. All right, let me close this out. And uh, let me go to my desktop open SSO, the trace that we just took. Now, in my last video, I mentioned that a request or response is generated when the URL is changed. So, this was our sample SP, the SP test. This is where the request originated. So, you can see that SP test is where the request originated and then it went on to SAML test or ID. This is the IDP. So from SP, the traffic went to IDP. So this is where the SAML request will be generated. Now, let's see how to see that request. Um, you need to go to Inspectors tab on the right. Then you will see Web Forms tab below it. Click on that and there you have it. The SAML request. Click on the value, make a right click, send a text wizard. The first part is uh, inflated or encrypted, uh, it's not readable. To make it readable, you need to click on the transform drop down and select from deflated SAML. Since I've already had it, since I, I already had it, I, I can see the SAML request in a readable format. to make it pretty let me copy let me go to my notepad paste it and let me also take the SAML response now the SAML response will be when the request from IDP goes to SP which is this the line number 10 so up till line number 8 and 9 it was um, the IDP so a response will be generated when the IDP goes to SP. So this is where the response is on line number 10. Click on the value, make a right click, send to text wizard. Again, the first part is inflated, it's not readable. Um, if you select the drop down from deflated SAML one time, it will always be set uh, for the next tries. Let me copy this as well. Put it on my notepad, select all, 
I've got a black and XML tool and make it 30 using using 30 cent and there we have it um, the first part is our SAML request the second part is our SAML response all right so this is how you take the filter uh, this is how you capture the fiddler trace and this is how you see the SAML request and response in fiddler by the way fiddler is an awesome tool you can you can do a lot but our scope is just limited to taking the SSO traffic and uh, seeing the SAML request and response. So let me close this out. All right. Um, now we'll see the browser trace using developer tool. So I make a right click, go to inspect or press F12 on my keyboard or go to options, more tools, developer tools, go to network tab. Now, um, I'm showing you this browser trace because many a times users may not be able to install Fiddler on their machine, maybe because of their company restrictions or they're not the admin on their system. So if you're troubleshooting and if you ask um, the end user to install Fiddler and give the Fiddler trace, they may not be able to. So in those cases, just ask them to get to the browser trace. All right, so let's try again for the URL and it's already capturing and it already logged me in because of my previous try but the request and response should already be here so this is where the request originated SP test this is an SP initiated SSO so SP test is where the request originated it went on to SAML test if you just hover your mouse on the records you can see um, the URLs so the first one is SP test this is where the request originated and the second one is SAML test.id so this is where the re SAML request is generated and you can also see that in the URL itself it contains SAML it says SAML request so you know that's your sign that this is for SAML request um, scroll down this is the SAML request again this is inflated it's not readable to make it readable if you do not have Fiddler either you you know go to Fiddler and uh, let me show that open Fiddler go to inspectors put anything in the text visit it doesn't matter delete this and there you have it and now you have it in readable format but if you do not have Fiddler we can uh, use the online tool so I'm gonna go to my favorite website samotool.com and go to online tool code decode Page 64. Um, now we have this uh, SAML request deflated in a readable format. Right, so now you can copy this, go to Notepad, and make it pretty. Uh, let me also take the SAML response. Um, so now from SAML test if it goes to SP test is where the response would be so now let's start looking scroll down I'm scrolling up now ACS this is where the um, response would be and there we have it SAML response it's inflated it's not readable so let me copy this either I put that in notepad plus plus text wizard or if you do not have fiddler then go to SAML tool put the inflated format and now you have it the deflated XML 
So there is your deflated response. You can read it. It's in readable format. Put in a notepad and let's make it pretty. All right. So there you have it. Now you have the SAML request at the top and the response um, below. And uh, I've already told you what to check in request and response in the last video. So let's not get into that. Let's look at the browser extensions. I also mentioned this browser extension that I use SAML message decoder in my last video. Uh, let me go through. Let me go over it again. So this is my SAML request. It, it captures the destination. ACS URL and this is my SAML response. Now, since this is test um, um, or sample SPIDPs, um, so you may not see a lot of uh, a lot of details are missing. But if you actually troubleshoot actual single sign-on traffic, you will see a lot of videos. It will also contain the the mapping attribute on the on the SAML request, which you cannot see here because it's it's a sample uh, sample system. So you need to check the issuer, ACS, destination, um, and, the, and the response. Uh, again, the is issuer and destination and the certificate and uh, <coughs> sign info. It means that uh, um, the response is signed and the subject. Uh, these are the subject attributes. Well, these are the basics. There's a lot that you check on the response, but at least these will get you moving. The second um, extension that I use nowadays is RC Federation, SAML, WS Federation, and OAuth. So as the name suggests, it not only just captures SAML, it also captures um, WS Federation traffic and OAuth. So when I troubleshoot OAuth issues, I use this extension instead of SAML message decoder, which only captures the SAML traffic. So here you can see this our request. And the uh, second one is our response. You don't need to make it pretty because it's already in a pretty format. Now, let me show you the same thing on uh, Firefox. So, open Firefox. Let me take the URL. Okay. In Chrome, the extensions capture the traffic, the SAML traffic, automatically. You don't need to open them. But in uh, uh, Firefox, you need to open the extension first. The extension in Chrome, sorry, in Firefox that I use is SAML Tracer. So I need to open it first. Now put the URL. And it is capturing the traffic. All right, so let me put the username and the password. There we have it. Now let me pause this. I do not want any unwanted record here. Um, so this is the SAML. Request originated from... Ah, I did not complete. Let me pause. Uh, unpause. Um, accept. All right, there we have it. Uh, let me pause it now. I was wondering because I did not see the response. <laughs> All right, so the request originated from SP test. It went on to SAML test. So there's, there's our SAML uh, request. It also says SAML, which is a sign that this is our either request or response because here it also, uh, for SAML response as well, it says SAML. So this is where the SAML record, records will be generated. So click on this line. Parameters, this is SAML request in deflate, I'm sorry, inflated format. Go to SAML and you have the SAML request in a pretty format. Same goes with the response. I'm on the SAML tab and I have this response in a pretty format. So that's how you um, see the traffic in Firefox. Let me show you one more thing.
um, as I mentioned before that many many a times users may not have Fiddler installed so the only option that you that you would have is to capture the web traffic the browser traffic so if the user does this he will have to make a right click anywhere on the left side of this trace save all as HR with content and let me save this on my desktop as SSO dot HR save so users will give you this HR format um, you know this HR trace to see this you open the browser and open the developer tool go to network import Um, and click on SSO HR. So again, you'll have to scroll through the records to see the SAML request and response. But there's one more thing. If you if you already have Fiddler, let's say the user doesn't have Fiddler and user has given you the browser trace, but if you have Fiddler in your system, you can see the browser trace in Fiddler. You'll have to make some changes. So those changes are let me close this out go to file import sessions by default it will be selected as folder tree change it to HTTP archive click on next and open the HR trace it is okay it has the traffic that we captured before so Let me delete all that. Once you can import session, HTTP archive, next, SSO HR. All right, now we have it. One thing to note here is if you capture or if you import the browser trace, the HR trace in Fiddler, the records will be jumbled. It will not be in order. So you can see the first line will be itself is SAML response. However, the first line should be SAML request or, you know, the first line should be from where the request originated, which is SP test, which is this. And then it should go to this, which is SAML request and SAML response. So just make a note of it. Just keep that in mind that uh, if you import HR and Fiddler, um, the records may not be um, in order. So you'll have to scroll and find find the desired um, line number to see the um, uh, sample request and response. So that's all folks. Um, in the coming videos, uh, I may cover the OAuth and OIDC troubleshooting. It's, it's very simple. Um, it's the concept that you need to uh, understand but if you understand the concept it's, it's very simple to troubleshoot OIDC and OAuth issues so thank you have a good day bye